Hi everyone, it's Sarah uh, checking in again this week. Um, I thought I'd do a quick uh, blog post um, before game two and just kind of to recap everything that happened last night in game one. Um, crazy day. It was really cool. That was my first time covering an NHL playoff game and working at one. And it was really awesome. You could definitely tell, um, just feel the intensity and how much everyone was into it and the fans. Um, it was really unique and really exciting and really cool. I got to um, walk around and kind of see what fans were wearing. I did a, like kind of a fan costume story um, that's up on Newsy Central. And I got to just talk to fans, see what they were wearing, um, what they thought about the whiteout, what they thought it was just to have playoff hockey back in the desert. And definitely some really interesting and um, creative outfits uh, out there. So that was really cool. Um, it made me, like, um, since I'm not, like, a fan necessarily anymore, like, obviously I'm a fan of the game. I really, I mean, I love hockey. Um, but working as a journalist and as a reporter, I really trained myself to be neutral and I don't cheer for the teams that I cover. I just cover the teams and that's my job. And so, um, I started to look at as, at, as going to hockey games as work and, you know, that's my, that's my job and, um, great job. Couldn't ask for a better job. But last night was like the first time when it reminded me of what it's like to be a fan of the game again, just to see that playoff hockey is kind of what, you know, you work towards the whole year, the players do, and the fans that stay and support them. And it made me just excited. And, and it's a different excitement than when you're a fan and you're in the stands cheering, but just to cover being, you know, be in there, write about these guys. Um, it was really awesome. It was so much fun, and I can't wait to go back there tomorrow for game two and hopefully for a long playoff um, drive. That'll be really exciting. Um, thoughts on game one? Um... Uh, it was. I thought it was a great game. First of all, I thought it was a great game to watch. Um, the, there was just always this pace, and there, I don't know if it was a nervous pace at the beginning, but there's always just high energy, and it surprised me that it was sustained that long throughout the game, and um, I wonder how long it'll last through the series. Um, I thought it, and it showed, it really sucked the momentum out early and, and kind of took the fans out when Detroit scored first. I kind of thought, oh no, you know, maybe maybe this team can't pull it out. Maybe this team, you know, regular season is one thing. Playoffs are totally different. Maybe that's not going to carry over. Um, but when they responded with the Andals goal and um, pretty quickly too, they responded. Um, I thought, okay, we have a game. This is going to be great action, and it was. Um, second period, Coyotes got a, got better. And, and talking to Tippett yesterday and then today again, he said, you know, there was that anxiety, there was that nervousness at the beginning, and a lot of guys, it was their first time in the playoffs, so um, they definitely settled down, got into the game. Um, I look back to, for me, what was really key was the penalty kill on the Shane Doan charging, charging call um, towards the end of the second period. It was still a 2-2 game at that time, but that could have easily swung the momentum in Detroit's direction, but the Coyotes killed it off phenomenally. I don't think Detroit ever really even had a chance to set up. So that just kind of parlayed into the third. Um, Morris was upstanding. I thought Yandel was one of the best players on the ice, and I talked to him today and did a story on him that will be, in, I believe, in tomorrow's paper, at least on Easy Central. Um, so cool guy, great story, um, just kind of, you know, his career. And um, so that's that was great to see for a youngster to kind of just contribute right off the bat and continue on the success he's had this season. Um, Briz was Briz. Um, the first one was shaky, obviously. He wished he could have had that one back. Um, but he made the saves that, that helped held the Coyotes in the game. And, you know, probably at one time down down the road in this series, they're going to need um, him to steal a game for them. And that's totally um, probable with the way Grizz has played the whole year. But um, Doan was great. I thought guys like Lombardi, Stempniak, just solid efforts. And you need that relentless pressure. And I think... As I said in, in my other posts, that you're strong on them, you're relentless, you're quick, you're physical, and you've got traffic, which what I think they did in front of Howard, don't on that screen um, on the power plays. I mean, that's going to work. So um, someone asked um, about complacency in game two and if they're going to kind of maybe 
let their foot off the gas pedal. And I think we'd expect that of them. At least I would a little bit because it's a young team maybe. A lot of guys haven't been here before and they don't realize maybe how much you have to bring it every night. So it wouldn't surprise me if that happens, but yet the Coyotes haven't really let their foot off the gas pedal the whole year. They haven't lost more than three games in a row. Um, so this is a team that pretty much, you know, wins a game, wipes the slate clean, wins a game, wipes the, wipes the slate clean, and mentally checks back in. Um, and today they were talking about it's going to get more intense, it's going to get more physical. So if they want to be successful, obviously they have to keep bringing it every night at that pace. And hopefully wear these bodies down in Detroit. Yeah, they most of them were injured and now they're healthy. Um, but they're an older set overall. They were logging tons of minutes, especially those guys on the back end. If you can wear them down and just really be physical on them, I think that'll help, um, even though they're used to playing into June. Um, so I'm excited for game two tomorrow. I mean, taking a 2-0 series late into Detroit would be um, obviously the best case scenario, but I think it, it would just you know, help the confidence and just really help the depth in the lineup and realize that, you know, everyone has a role, everyone has a part, and we need all of them to carry on and have success. Um, so that'll be exciting. I can't wait for, for Friday, for tomorrow, um, and to go back out there before they go on the road. Um, so um, for my end, I still have a couple videos that I'm working on. I'm having some difficulty getting them on the site just with um, lots of people are doing videos and um, it's taking time to upload them. So um, that should be out there soon. And um, tomorrow I think I will be on the radio again talking um, about the playoffs, about the Coyotes, kind of maybe recapping game one and looking forward to, to tomorrow night's game. Game two, um, it's 10, 10 a.m., and you can listen online. It's breakradioshow.com. So if you want to tune in and listen to my lovely voice um, drone on about Coyotes hockey, it'll be fun. I, usually like, I really like talking to those guys and spewing my opinion um, about the team. So, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. My documentary is coming along. I uh, We shot again Tuesday night, got some interviews, and tomorrow should be our final day shooting. Um, so I'm going to do that right before I head out to the Coyotes game. Um, so I'm excited for that. Definitely a little tired, as you can probably see. Um, it's been late nights and um, just crazy busy schedule, which is cool, though. It's, that's the playoffs. So can't complain. But I'll try and maybe check in next week sometime, uh, maybe towards the end of the week or, or before the Coyotes come back. Um, I guess it would be next Friday would be game um, five. I guess that would be game five if it goes to five. Um, obviously, they'd have to sweep in Detroit and win tomorrow. But we'll see. We'll play it by ear. And um, hit me up on Twitter um, if you have anything that you want me to talk about next time. And check my Twitter tomorrow to make sure um, that I'm on the radio so you can listen because I'll post it on there if I'm going to be on there for sure. So I anticipate I will. So that is it for now. I am going to work on some more videos and then call it a night. So I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.